what's going on guys uh, we have a second video from the simple tricks season uh, i've had a few comments on the previous video that those not necessarily look very ethical and uh, uh, they don't look really far play but in my opinion and in opinion of other people that were commenting uh, because we are actually playing the game made by players now we can easily assume that all the things presented are within the intent of the creators of the game because if they didn't intend that they would just remove it and uh, try to try to solve it somehow and because they didn't i think it is pretty safe to say that all of those are very legitimate tactics and if you can use them to your advantage then you definitely should so let's start with the simple one frenzy units you know frenzy has changed a lot since <laughs> eighth edition and now because the frenzy checks are pretty much rare and they require you to be pretty close uh, you don't pay that much attention to it but there are uh, three things that i would like to point out that you can do to prevent your units from testing the frenzy so the first one is just not looking at your opponent as you can see at the plug disciples they are facing actually down so they are even though they are pretty pretty close the snakes they are not looking at the snakes so they don't have to test the frenzy this works really well with all the flying units, all the light troops units. So basically with troops that can move in, in any direction. For example, you couldn't do it with things like Lugars or Feral Edbashers because they would be just stuck looking down and they would need to make a reform and then crawl forward. So the second thing is that probably those free Var guys also don't want to charge the unit of snakes up front because most likely this will result in the Var guys dead and the snake's getting a 300 degree charge because they get a free post combat pivot. So what you can do actually is uh, to make sure that you will have other units to charge. For example, here you have the skeletons that, ha that are on a very, very large charge roll, but uh, according to the new, new frenzy rules, you don't need to charge the closest unit, you just need to charge any unit if you fail the test. So you can just declare the charge against the skeletons it and it will be much, much better to fail the large charge than to get into the combat with those snakes, right? And the third part is that you can block your frenzy unit with your other units. So in this example, the Lugars are blocked by the uh, Torok anointed hero. So they don't have to test frenzy, but if they want to charge, then you can obviously declare the charge with the Torok anointed first and then declare the charge with the Lugars. This is pretty important that something like Tarek Anointed is here and not something like Wolf Riders because if the Wolf Riders were there and you wanted to charge the Lugas next turn then you would need to charge the Wolf, li Wolf Riders as well and Wolf Riders are not the unit that you want to charge usually so if you want to block your friends units from testing in that way then it's usually smart to, to use a unit that is likely to declare, to declare a charge in next turn as well this obviously has a pretty clear downside because now any unit that would chaff the Tarok Anointed would also chaff the Lugas in the same, at the same time. But you just have to calculate them and weight the risks. And there are units that are not as disciplined as Lugars and uh, maybe it can work better in something like Orson Goblins, right? So let's look at the second thing that I would like to point out. So let's talk about the Purse Directions. This is one of the pictures from my own games from the local tournaments in Wrocław. I faced the unit of Minotaurs and the unit of Angors with my Dancers of Yama. I don't want to uh, really fight against the unit of Minotaurs from the front because this is not going to go well and even if it is then I will suffer heavy casualties. And I, I can however fight the unit of Minotaurs from the flank but in this setup I have no way of charging the flank actually. But in current rules, I unfortunately, I know that you don't have to pursue from the unit with the most ranks, but the owner of the units that are pursuing chooses in which direction the opponent flees. So if I, for example, have the unit of Harpies on the right and I decide to charge both the Harpies and the Dancers of Yama, then if I manage to break the Ungor unit, I can decide to make, him, make the opponent flee from the Harpies. And if he flees from the Harpies, I can pursue with Dancers of Yama and charge his Minotaur's flank. And <laughs> you have to admit, this looks much, much better than charging the Minotaurs in the front, right? So I think this is quite useful and this, uh, this change is here for some time, but some people still don't know about it. 
this is obviously useless against the armies that crumble, but against armies uh, that just flee, it can be very useful. I used it multiple times. And well, while this example is pretty radical, then uh, you also need to remember that there are examples that will just allow you to change your pursuit direction in a more suitable way. Like, like you can tr totally imagine opponent trying to redirect you to overrun in the wrong direction, but then you can charge the chaff also with other unit from the flank and uh, change the pursuit direction com completely as long as you don't kill the chaff. And generally I would say that stuff like this uh, turns out to be useful in at least one game in two or one game in three. The next point is pretty interesting because usually you don't want every model in the opponent unit to contact you. So for example here I want the skeletons to face as, le as low number of crashers as possible. So what I can do is I either I can put another unit on the flank. So now if the crashers want to charge the left uh, unit of skeletons, then they cannot touch uh, my unit of skeletons with all four crashers, but only three, because otherwise he would need to move my right unit. But if he wants to charge my uh, right unit of skeletons, then I have something like impassable terrain here. So again, he cannot fit all crashers in, uh, this, in the same unit. Uh, this is really important and with the good setup, you can heavily reduce the number of models that your opponent can touch you with. You just have to remember that with single charges, the first priority is not to move the charged unit at all. And then the second priority is to maximize the number of models. So with the good angle and uh, for example, with the impassable terrain, you can do a lot of, a lot of weird stuff. If you, for example, position the white king instead of the skeleton unit and tilt it a bit, then maybe only one crusher will be able to touch him. And the other thing is that if you have, for example, a big monster, and then looking at the picture here, if your opponent wants to charge you, then uh, this is a frontal charge, as you can see, because more than half of the front edge is in the front arc. So we can basically connect only with two warriors on this Mo of Akan. But normally, if we were just facing, like, we had a greater distance, he could fit all the warriors. So this is a huge difference. Two models touching and eight models touching, that's a, that's a great deal. And this is actually a very good way of uh, chaffing enemy units or blocking enemy units. And often this will discourage the opponent from charging whatsoever. Let's go to the next one, uh, the army specific one this time. I think this only works for the spearbacks, but I'm not sure if we have any other unit in the game that is forced to stand and shoot. The key factor here is that to be able to stand and shoot, you have to be charged from the, from the front. So let's say I want to shoot at these crashers, but I don't want to stand and shoot, I want to flee. And usually if I just face, him, face them straight forward, then after the charge, I am forced to declare the stand and shoot because of my rule. But with the current positioning of the crashers, if they decide to charge, I don't need to stand and shoot because I can flee. One thing to consider is that you have to remember that after shooting, you might kill some models. So if it would be done a bit more lazily, then sometimes after removing the left model, arc of the charge could be changed to the front and then you would be screwed. So you have to always remember to make sure that even after your opponent removes some models, this would still be a flank charge. And let's go to the last trick for today. This is a very famous one and it thinks, I think it came from one of the first versions of the Ninth Age, but I still know players that don't know about it. and. Honestly, it helped me out a lot of times. So you don't, you actually don't have to use neither the Inspiring Presence nor the Battle Thunderbell hold your ground rule. This is very good because you sometimes don't want your units to stick in place. You want them to flee. You want uh, either because fleeing they have a chance of saving themselves and not fleeing they don't, but most likely you just don't want to give your opponent a free post-combat pivot in the next turn, so he would be able to charge in his next player turn. So we can totally decide to to flee. Unfortunately, you can you cannot just say that you okay, I am not passing this test, I just flee. You have to still roll, but at least you can use the own unit leadership. And actually this can be very low sometimes. So this can be really useful and 
can take your opponent of God definitely. But I think it is much safer now to assume that your opponent knows about this and you definitely should plan ahead assuming that he can decide not to use the general nor the BSB. This can also sometimes help when you mess something heavily up and then you need, want to fail some panic check just to uh, deny some crazy overruns and stuff. But generally you have to always think before taking every leadership test if you definitely want to use the general and the BSB for that. Because I, I've seen countless players uh, just not thinking about it and then uh, immediately after throwing the dice realizing that they wanted to not use the general nor BSB but they just forgot. So guys, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Cheers!